now that you know about confounding that you have learned in the previous week and adjustment that you have learned in this week I want to talk about something else like effect modification or interaction can anybody tell me the difference between effect modification and interaction that so uh, this is true that this is these two terms are used uh, interchangeably because the estimation procedure is exactly the same you just add an interaction term in your model and then you can try to estimate uh, the effect modification or interaction whatever right but the conceptually they may be slightly different and that's why I'm basically talking about this and you may find this particular paper to be very helpful in understanding the difference between the interaction and effect modification and th that's the DOI number if you want to take a look at that paper all right so let me start with the basics so I have an exposure variable that is smoking and I have an outcome variable that is hypertension right and I have drawn this crazy DAG based on some of my understanding of like what is happening with the association between smoking and hypertension right and in here say I want to check what is the association between smoking and hypertension with respect to income right so if you look it at this uh, at this DAG income doesn't have direct any direct uh, link between the smoking and hypertension directly right so like this is kind of like an external type of variable and based on high income versus low income you can try to see what is the association between smoking and hypertension and stuff like that right so in here what is happening is that you are basically trying to do two analysis like one is based on what is happening in the high income and another is what is happening in the low income that's about it whether dif they are different or not and stuff like that that will determine whether there is an effect modification present in this analysis so say for example for high income the smoking and hypertension uh, when you are trying to measure the association the beta coefficient associated with smoking is 3 and when you are doing it for the low income the beta coefficient associated with smoking is 4 and then uh, it is also significantly different and then you you say that yes there is an effect modification present because those beta coefficients are different when you are just stratifying based on this income right instead of stratifying you could have just included an interaction between interaction term in the regression when you are just fitting this model with the smoking and income and you could have uh, obtained exactly the same estimates that you would have obtained in the stratification example if you had la uh, large enough sample size right so what is the definition of effect modification then when you are stratifying based on the effect modifier and you are trying to see the treatment effect estimates in those two groups and if they are not similar you say that there is an effect modification present in this analysis that's about it this income variable should not have to do with anything with the exposure and outcome it can be just a random variable and you can just try to check whether they're different or not right so that's effect modification and there is no direct interaction in a causal way because like this income has not anything to do with smoking directly in the DAG right or, or like with the outcome as well like it, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the outcome all right let me try to reframe the question the question is now what is the effect of income on hypertension and what would be the uh, confounders then see that now I have a different set of uh, minimum sufficient adjustment set right so in here I have this age diet or age education previously when I was using smoking as the exposure variable then I just had age and gender uh, as uh, minimum sufficient uh, confounder set uh, now think of, of this scenario as a two exposure scenario where you are basically trying to figure out if income was my uh, exposure and smoking was my exposure what is the joint effect of both of those on the outcome right and then 
obviously you are considering income as a second exposure variable and then you can see there is uh, some con the adjustment set that is different than when you are considering either of them as exposure variable right so the confounder set is changing depending on who you are assigning as the exposure role if you are assigning multiple exposure variable obviously this list can grow but Thinking about causally, like this income does not have any, anything to do with hypertension directly, right? So maybe the income is the proxy for education, and education has some direct role towards the uh, outcome variable. And since income is just a proxy for uh, education, and you can just try to figure out whether you are trying to get the interaction between the smoking and the education, but since education is unmeasured, you are just using income as a proxy variable to get that. Or if education variable was present and you had access to that, then you could, you could try to uh, get the uh, joint exposure effect of education and smoking on hypertension, right? And, and note that our Confounder list again changed to age and gender uh, in this case. But this is an example of when interaction is present because like both education and smoking has direct impact on the outcome, right? Whereas previously where we were considering income as one of the exposures, it did not have any direct impact on the outcome. So in the previous scenarios, even if the treatment effect estimate would change, you would just say that effect modification is present. But in our case, when both education and smoking are impacting the outcome, we can basically say both are jointly impacting the outcome, and that's why they are interacting, right? So do you get the difference? Like the, to be able to interact, both of these have to impact the outcome at the same time. So the generally speaking, what interaction does and the definition of interaction is that if I was just considering smoking as an exposure variable, I would have impact, say for example, two. And if I had a education as a uh, variable that impacts our outcome, I would have another impacts, say one. So when I combine these two, two plus one equal to three, so when I use both of these variables as, as exposure at the same time, I should have three as the treatment effect estimate jointly from both of these variables. But if I'm getting something different than three, if it is five or one, like a, as a joint effect, then the treatment effect is being very different than the individual treatment, uh, the individual treatment effect on the outcome, right? So the distinction between the interaction and the effect modification is that these two are working, but these two are working differently when they're working together. Say for example, we know that people die from alcohol drinking, and we also know that people die from road accidents, right? But when people are drunk driving, it is exponentially more compared to each of the, these effects, right? When people are just drunk and die, and, and or when people just uh, drink alcohol and die, and people when uh, they just drive and die, are different than when they are drunk driving, very differently, right? So in that scenario, we would say that drinking and driving together has an interaction effect, right? Versus in the in the scenario where we are just considering a uh, effect modification, effect modification could be just about anything. It doesn't have to interact with your exposure or the outcome or anything. It, can, it, shouldn't, it doesn't need to work together with the smoking uh, in any kind, shape, or form. It is just a variable. You can just take any variable, such as race, income level, education level, and stuff like that, and you can just try to see whether, based on education level, does, it, does the association change? And those are generally, generally helpful for policy making purposes if you see that for education something else is changing. But interaction has a very different role where you are 
kind of getting to see whether something is working together and making the effect significantly more or significantly less, right? So that's the distinction between effect modification and interaction. Yes? You can think of this this way, that when you are considering interaction, you can kind of think this as a two exposure model, right? So you can just, like there is no one primary exposure. You are just considering both as a joint exposure and trying to see what is the joint effect and whether this joint effect is more or less than the separate effects. That's why you, when you know whether there is an interaction effect. Effect modification has an entirely different purpose. Like just about anything in your uh, data, you just check whether in the, in the first category of uh, effect modifier or the second category of effect mod modifier, does the treatment effect change or not? Simple as that. It doesn't have to work together with the exposure. But for the interaction, the concept of interaction, it has to work together. So this is subtle distinction, but in, in terms of modeling, you are just including an interaction term in the model, no distinction whatsoever, right? So this is important for us epidemiologists to understand that that's how interaction and effect modifiers are different. Yes. Yes, there are different reporting guidelines about how you are reporting the result and also different guideline of how you should be adjusting your model. So for example, for this case, you should be adjusting for everything that is in the backdoor path because both of them are exposure variables, right? But when we are basically talking about an effect modifier, you, you just adjust for the variables that are effect modifier, sorry, the confounders for the original exposure of interest. So you can see that for income, age is a variable and education is a variable. Both are back in the backdoor path for income, but you do not care about them when you are dealing with the effect modification because these are, effect modification is just another variable. It is not another exposure. All right. So you will see in the textbook, they sometimes say we should not say effect modifier, we should say effect measure modification. Because like depending on which type of measure of association you are using, so for example, risk difference or risk ratio, you may not even have any effect modification uh, in one, and you may still have effect modification in another. So for example, in a risk ratio, in a multiplicative scale, you may have effect modification, but you may not have any effect modif modification in the risk difference or the additive scale. So it is very effect of measure dependent, right? So obviously when you are dealing with different measures, you are uh, dealing with this. Uh, 